and welcome to Conversations on Public Relations. I'm Mary Fletcher Jones. David Heisen is at the camera. Today I'm so pleased to be talking with Rachel DeCaro Mesher, Corporate Communications Director for Hobsons, a global leader in higher education and K-12 solutions. Rachel will be sharing some of the challenges and experiences associated with being a Corporate Communications Director for a large organization. Rachel, thanks for letting us visit with you here today. No, thank you for coming. <laughs> I'd like to learn more about how you got started sure. in public relations. So I really started as a generalist and working with various smaller companies. I had an opportunity to work on various PR projects, working at a media release here and there. And when I came to Hobson's last year, we were looking really to centralize that role and have it be more strategic within the organization. So is Thompson's the first company that you've worked for or have you worked at agencies or other I companies? I started actually in aerospace working oh, cool. on public relations and various topics. Very small because more generalization of we need more and more com. So working on marketing communication projects. From there I started in financial services working for businesses similar to Metabonte, Harlan Financial Services. Working more product marketing that still had elements of PR in them going to trade shows, having speaking opportunities, mm. really focusing on the communications aspect, but had PR elements to each of those projects. I see. And at Hobson's, is your work very similar? What, what kinds of needs do they have in terms of public relations? Wow. I, they have a lot of needs. I think as the organization has grown over the years, really we were doing ad hoc PR. We're going to do a media release, not really understanding that needs to be a media program. I see. What do you want to do with that? Strategically, what are we trying to tell the market? Are we trying to create awareness? Are we building ourselves a thought leader? What are we trying to accomplish? Mm -hmm. And until our communication department was actually created, which was about last year in June, oh, really? yeah. that was all being done divisionally. And when you do it divisionally, you have to remember then the division focused on the division, not as a global brand. How many divisions were there? So know? there are two main divisions. We mm -hmm. have a higher education institution that handles all of our higher ed clients and then we have a k-12 which handles all of our school base so that could be middle school and high school so now that's all integrated into a corporate communications department of which you are the director now correct <laughs> that's right so wow. essentially what we're doing is okay so we want to think we want to communicate one brand one yes. company yes and when you're an organization that has been aggressively growing through acquisition and organic growth you really need to think about centrally what are you trying to communicate to the audience mm -hmm. what are you communicating to the market and when you have two disparate business units focusing on their own needs there's not that global viewpoint of what are we communicating out to our audience what does that look like what do we want to say and have that one person really manage and be the spokesperson for the organization and working with our executives and experts on how to communicate that to the market so it hasn't been a terribly long time since no. you've been doing this but are you seeing results in terms of we actually are day? seeing very yes. we're seeing great results first of all it starts with our media placement I think mm -hmm. it's more cohesive mm -hmm. I think we're doing a better job of telling our story of being a global brand mm -hmm. and I think we're being more strategic on where we want to be placed and what I saw with the past portfolio is we were really not focused in one area. We were, you know, we had a placement here in a regional publication, or we had a placement here with a national publication. But if we're focusing ourselves as a thought leader, then we really need to focus on our market. What are our readers reading? What do they want to hear about? What are, what are their needs and how can we address those needs? So really focusing more on highlighting our customers oh. and highlighting their success, I think has been really impactful for us because, you know, when you're going into higher institutions and colleges and universities, this is a very small market. People want to hear what other people are doing. Oh, interesting. Are they interested in the best practices and that kind of thing? This business, especially in higher education, K-12, is really interested in, I want to know what University X is doing. Oh. oh, they use your products? Great. How are they using them? Because every institution has their own objectives. So our products can be really used in a number of ways, and I think there's a commonality amongst them, but really it's to help highlight how we're making our clients successful. And public relations helps tell that story? Absolutely. We tell the story. I really believe my job is storytelling. Mm -hmm. My job is to tell the story. It's great, you know, we are an education company first that uses technology for success. I see. So really what we're trying to do is help our clients. How do I enable this technology to get my goals? And how do I deliver that strategy? 
Rachel, I noticed when we started talking about the storytelling aspect yeah. of your job that you just lit up. I'd like to know, is that your favorite part of the job? What do you like most about this type of public relations work? I think what I like most about this type of work is the storytelling. Because essentially what I see my role is to tell the story of our clients, how we make them successful. I think the difference between a company that is good versus great is you really highlight your client's successes mm -hmm. in the market and how you've partnered with them to be successful. That's interesting. And, and, and for yourself personally and your personal growth as a communicator, what would you say this job is doing for you? I think this job for me is allowing me to do different things within public relations that I don't think most corporate communicators actually have the opportunity to do. I work on a number of different projects, you know, as I said before, we are aggressively growing and mm -hmm. I actually do a lot of communications regarding acquisitions, which I think is very unique oh, interesting. as yeah. a communicator to work on that of how do we communicate why this is beneficial to the market mm -hmm. versus why it's beneficial for the company. Right. I see. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. And then you also mentioned the challenges, especially since your, your department is, what did you say, it's a year old? It's a year old. Yes. I mean, we're essential, we are a department that has only been in existence for about a year. And wow. when you're dealing with Hobson's, one of the greatest things about this organization is we have longevity in our employees. So you're dealing with a lot of folks who've worked here for a number of years. They're used to doing things a certain way. I see. And as you're coming in, as really I see my role as being consultative. Like, I think we should do X. This is why I think we should do X. This is how we need to move forward. And you have folks who've been doing it a certain way that just probably don't know it could be done a different way. And I think that's a unique challenge because essentially I have many stakeholders within the organization. I have our senior leaders. I have our VP of marketing, marketings. I have various business development. I have all these folks that we're working with and we all have to come to a central goal. So mm -hmm. a lot of times I'm corralling people. So <laughs> I know that you want to do this and I know this division wants to do this and then our partner wants to do this and I have to get everybody to get to one. I How are we going to get to the goal? So I do a lot of like project managing. Okay guys, if we're going to communicate this, what are we telling people? So what is your role? Are you helping them kind of see the bigger picture? Are you setting priorities, explaining I the strategy? Said, yep. <laughs> I set the strategy. If we said that our CEO says these are our seven objectives throughout the year, and we're focusing on, let's say, objective four. Right. Then we need to have one global story. Yeah. So what you have communicated to me, does that make sense? And it doesn't go back to the objective. So if we can't set an objective, then we don't have a strategy, which means we can't move forward. So really, it's for me to kind of come 30,000 feet and like, I understand what you're saying, but that doesn't make sense. Right. And sometimes I am really the voice of reason. And as like a consultant, you can consult your client to say, these are the best things that you should do. And I'm sure you have had that experience. Every once in a while, well. yes, yeah. <laughs> so that you're trying to say, listen, if our goal is to do this, our objective is to meet X, then we need to do X, Y, and Z. Right. And getting all those stakeholders. But you know, when, again, you've been doing things a certain way and you're like, well, this is my thing and I really believe it should be this. It's like kittens. I'm trying to get everybody <laughs> on one page. Like, Hey, I need you over here. I know you're interested in this, but I really need you to be focused on what our objective is and what are we trying to accomplish. So say, for example, um, someone who's in the organization, you know, comes home from the weekend and they got this kind of off the wall idea. Yeah. You know, maybe that happened and they just really think it's going to work. They kind of are in love with this idea. Of course. And you know that maybe this is not the way not to go. The best. No. What do you do in a situation like that? You know, I think the first thing with anything is you have to hear them out. Mm -hmm. And that's always a challenge for myself because I'm listening and I'm very expressive. So a lot of times I have to put my game face on like, uh-huh, <laughs> tell me more. I see. And so I try to be pres prescriptive and say, okay. I think your idea would work in this type of landscape. Oh, so the current landscape we're working in doesn't have the elements for success. And I focus back on what is the objective. So you're not really attacking the idea, you're just kind of saying maybe it's not the best match. Maybe we don't do that today. Okay. Maybe we wait 45 days. Or, you know what, I think that would better work in this scenario. So I never try to say no, because as soon as you say no to someone, that makes them defensive. Well, why aren't you going to let me do that? And I think it's really great. My baby's beautiful, and it just it doesn't work out. I see what you're so saying. So you can't yeah. come at it head on. You have to just say, okay, the elements that you've told me are X, Y, and Z. I think based on what you've said, that's not going to work in this situation. However, I think it may work in a different situation where, you know, 
we are going to this conference and that more aligns with the audience of that conference as an example. So working in corporate communications, it's not just about you know planning the media relations, planning strategy. Yeah. There's also a lot of diplomacy, isn't there? I do a lot of diplomacy. You know, I have a lot of stakeholders. I deal with a lot of egos, both within the organization as well as external. When you're dealing with you know reporters and editors, they have their own objectives. Oh yeah, so let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, they have their own objectives. You know, especially and it's really hard for everybody to understand. But I think this is so important <laughs> to you. It's important, right. but not to the editor. So right. essentially, we're trying to, how do we help them achieve their goal? And if their goal is to sell more papers or to create thought leadership or whatever the goal is, we need to match that. And if we don't match that, we're not getting placed. That's as simple as I can make it. So it's really about focusing on what is our other stakeholder? What are we trying to influence? We do a lot of persuasion, and I, in my opinion, in, in public relations, I can't make people do things, but I can influence them and I can persuade them to think about a topic, especially as an education company who deals with a lot of clients. We have a large client base. They have two very different ways of how they do business. So we really have to do a lot of persuasion and influence within those markets to achieve our goals. I like that. I'll, I'll remember those keywords, persuasion and influence. Because I really believe that's what, in storytelling, that's what you're doing. You can't sell people on things. What you can do is persuade them and influence them to do what you want them to do.